Hello, this is Doug Young, one of the contributing editors for Acoustic Guitar. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how to enhance your amplified sound by using reverb, chorus, and delay effects. I'm going to talk about some of the different types of effects processors that are available, and then we'll listen to how they sound. Although some acoustic players go pretty wild with their use of effects, most of them actually apply them more in a way that enhances the natural tone rather than to create a unique tonal color the way many electric players do. In this video, I'm going to focus on reverb, chorus, and delay, which are the common effects used with acoustic instruments. But I'll also demonstrate a few other sounds that might be fun to play with. Effects processors come in several different packages. Some are individual floor pedals, such as this TC Electronic Reverb, Fishman Chorus, or this Digitech Delay, while others are multi-effects units, like this Zoom A2. Also, some mount in a rack, like this TC G Major. And also many amps and mixing boards have basic effects integrated into their designs. Individual foot pedals tend to be the easiest to set up and use. And while the difference in quality between simple pedals and studio quality rack mounted gear used to be significant, recent advances in digital technology have closed that gap. And in some cases you might find you don't need complicated studio effects to enhance your tone. Effects can be set up in two basic ways, inline or through an effects loop. For an inline setup, you just plug your guitar into the effects input. I have my guitar cord, we'll go into the input of this effect, and then I have another guitar cord that will go into the output of the effect, and this cord goes into the input of the amplifier. If you're going to use the effects loop of an amp or a preamp, you simply patch the effect into the ins and outs of that loop, and that allows you to keep your actual guitar signal directly into the amplifier without any interference on its way to the amp or the preamp. Using an effect loop sometimes results in a cleaner signal and fewer messier cables. But before choosing one method or the other, you need to check whether your effects are designed for instrument or line level inputs. The most common and useful effect for acoustic guitarists is probably reverb. It wasn't very long ago that getting good digital reverb was quite expensive, but with today's digital technology bringing prices down, there's really no reason not to have this effect be part of your sound. Reverb basically simulates the sound of playing in a large room, and accordingly, most reverb processors will have settings that allow you to simulate the sound of different size rooms from closets to large concert halls. A little reverb will make your amplified tone more realistic sounding, and it can take away the harsh attack that's sometimes an issue with certain pickups. It can also make the guitar more forgiving to play by adding a bit of sustain to its sound. But it's also important to listen to the sound of the room you're playing in before choosing the type of reverb you use or whether to use reverb at all. For example, if you're playing in a church with an inherent reverberating sound, you'd be most likely better off not adding any artificial reverb as part of your sound. The most basic reverbs simply have a single control that adjusts how much of the effect is added to your sound. And that's the case with the reverb that's built into this Fishman Loudbox 100 amplifier. Here's what the amp sounds like with no reverb. And here's what it sounds like when I turn the reverb up about halfway. Or all the way up. It helps to play a couple of short staccato phrases like that when auditioning reverb sounds so that you can hear the effects decay. Most reverbs that are built into dedicated effects units have more sophisticated controls and some are more elaborate than others. For example, let's take a look at this TC Electronic Nova reverb. Uh, this reverb has multiple types of reverb. For example, if I push this button, I'm going to have a room reverb that simulates the sound of a relatively small room. Fairly subtle sound. If I, this uh, next setting is a spring reverb, which simulates the sound of an electric guitar amp. A little springier. Or this is a very nice effect for acoustic guitar, a hall effect, which is just the sound of a larger room like a concert hall. There are a lot of different controls and every reverb is different, but one of the most common ones is uh, the decay. So we can go for a very short decay, which would be a relatively small hall in this case. Or the reverb dies out quickly all the way to a very long decay, which would simulate a very large room. We can also control the mix level all the way from completely dry to completely all reverb or anywhere in between. 
So the trick in setting up a reverb unit like this is to pick the basic sounds you want, determine the right decay for the type of music, perhaps a longer decay on a slow tune, shorter decay on a, a faster moving tune, and then to pick an appropriate level so that it's just augmenting your sound and enhancing the tone and not overwhelming the sound. Perhaps something. So as you can see, reverb can be extremely useful in creating a natural guitar sound. If you play in larger venues, your sound engineer may be providing this effect directly from the mixing board. And even if that's the case, it's a good idea to know about the terminology necessary to communicate the type of reverb you'd like. While reverb tends to be more of an enhancement than a radical effect, delay tends to be something that's more noticeable. Delays can be used to add a subtle sense of space to the sound, much like reverb, but you can also create longer and louder delays that make it sound like your notes are bouncing off of a wall, or even like you're playing every note twice. Some delay pedals offer extremely long delays to the point that they can be used as a looping device so that you can play an entire phrase and then play that phrase back as you add additional parts over the top. So let's take a look at a typical delay. This is a Digitech Time Bender. Uh, this device has a lot of different controls and a lot of different options, but I'll focus on three controls that are very common to most delays. And that is basically the delay time, how many times the delay repeats, and the balance between your direct sound and the delayed sound. Right now I have this delay set on a half a second delay and a single repeat, so that if I play the note once, you're going to hear it play back again a second time real fast. And that can be quite nice for adding a little uh, enhanced sound to, to a, a melody line. But we can also play around with the sound a little bit differently. For example, I might want a shorter delay for that type of sound. Uh, I'll make it a quarter of a second. Or we might want to increase the number of repeats. Let's increase the time on that a little bit and maybe add a little more uh, to the mix so we hear a little more of the echo to get a more uh, ethereal sound. Another very popular effect is called chorus. Chorus will give your sound a sort of a shimmering quality that could sometimes sound a bit like a 12-string guitar or in extreme settings almost approximate the sound of an organ played through a Leslie speaker. Chorus is really easier to be demonstrated than explained, so let's have a listen to a typical chorus. This is a Fishman AFX chorus box, and it has a number of different sounds, but I've set it to a, a basic chorus sound. Uh, let's just hear the, the default setting here. We can basically control, most courses have several common controls, we can control the speed of the effect from very fast to very slow. And there's also usually a control that controls how obvious the effect is, how deep the control is, to how subtle it is. The chorus effect works by creating a very short delay that varies with time so that the sound changes with a regular pattern. Uh, most chorus effects have at least two controls, one that varies the speed of the effect, another co controls the depth. Some chorus effects are designed to work in stereo, which can lead to a very compelling sound, although that effect requires two amplifiers or a stereo PA system, which may not be practical in many situations. So let's quickly have a listen to how a few other effects sound in the context uh, being used with an acoustic guitar. Uh, I have a TC Electronic G Major rack unit here that has a lot of different effects. Uh, for starters, let's listen to a tremolo. Or perhaps you'd like to uh, simulate some bass guitar sounds by introducing an octave pedal. Here's a bit of a Leslie speaker simulation. Or 
or here's a flanger. So you can really have a lot of fun with all these different effects, uh, modifying your sound to get all kinds of interesting sounds. So these are some of the basics of using effects with an amplified acoustic guitar. This video is an excerpt from the chapter on effects and EQ of my downloadable Amplication Essentials Guides, which is available at AcousticGuitar.com and which includes PDF articles and longer videos on a variety of amplification topics. For Acoustic Guitar, I'm Doug Young. Mm -hmm.